What's up guys? In this video, we'll learn about broadcasting and illustrate its importance and major convenience when it comes to tensor operations. So let's get to it. Over the last couple of videos, we've immersed ourselves in tensors, and hopefully now we have a good understanding of how to work with, transform, and operate on them. If you recall, a couple videos back, I mentioned the term broadcasting and said that we would later make use of it to vastly simplify our VGG16 pre-processing code. That's exactly what we'll be doing in this video. Before we get into the details about what broadcasting is though, let's get a sneak peek of what our transform code will look like once we've introduced broadcasting. Because I'm using Git for source management, I can see the diff between our original predict.js file and the modified version of this file that uses broadcasting. On the left, we have our original predict.js file. Within the click event, recall this is where we transformed our image into a tensor. Then the rest of this code was all created to do the appropriate pre-processing for VGG16, where we centered and reversed the RGB values. Now on the right, this is our new and improved predict.js file that makes use of broadcasting in place of all the explicit one by one tensor operations on the left. So look, all of this code in red has now been replaced with what's shown in green. That's a pretty massive reduction of code. Before we show how this happened, we need to understand what broadcasting is. Broadcasting describes how tensors with different shapes are treated during arithmetic operations. For example, it might be relatively easy to look at these two rank two tensors and figure out what the sum of them would be. They have the same shape, so we just take the element wise sum of the two tensors where we calculate the sum element by element, and here we go, we have our resulting tensor. Now, since these two tensors have the same shape, one by three, no broadcasting is happening here. Remember, broadcasting comes into play when we have tensors with different shapes. All right, so what would happen if our two rank two tensors instead looked like this and we wanted to sum them? We have one with shape one by three and the other with shape three by one. Well, here's where broadcasting will come into play. Before we cover how this is done, go ahead and pause the video and just see intuitively what comes to mind as the resulting tensor from adding these two together. Give it a go, write it down, and keep what you write handy because we'll circle back around to what you wrote later in the video. All right, we're first going to look at the result and then we'll go over how we arrive there. Our result from summing these two tensors is a three by three tensor. So here's how broadcasting works. We have two tensors with different shapes. The goal of broadcasting is to make the tensors have the same shape so we can perform element wise operations on them. First, we have to see if the operation we're trying to do is even possible between the given tensors. Based on the tensors original shapes, there may not be a way to reshape them to force them to be compatible. And if we can't do that, then we can't use broadcasting. The rule to see if broadcasting can be used is this. We compare the shapes of the two tensors, starting at their last dimensions and working backwards. Our goal is to determine whether or not each dimension between the two tensor shapes is compatible. In our example, we have shapes three by one and one by three. So we first compare the last dimensions. The dimensions are compatible when either A, they're equal to each other, or B, one of them is one. Comparing the last dimensions of the two shapes, we have a one and a three. Are these compatible? Well, let's check the rule. Are they equal? No, one doesn't equal three. Is one of them one? Yes. Great, the last dimensions are compatible. Working our way to the front, for the next dimension, we have a three and a one. Similar story, just switched order, right? So are these compatible? Yes. Okay, that's the first step. We've confirmed each dimension between the two shapes is compatible. If, however, while comparing the dimensions, we confirm that at least one dimension wasn't compatible, then we would cease our efforts there because the arithmetic would not be possible between the two. Now, since we've confirmed that our two tensors are compatible, we can sum them and use broadcasting to do it. When we sum two tensors, the result of this sum will be a new tensor. Our next step is to find out the shape of this resulting tensor. We do that by, again, comparing the shapes of the original tensors. Let's see exactly how this is done. Comparing the shape of one by three to three by one, we first calculate the max of the last dimension. The max of three and one is three. 
three will be the last dimension of the shape of the resulting tensor. Moving on to the next dimension. Again, the max of one and three is three. So three will be the next dimension of the shape of the resulting tensor. We've now stepped through each dimension of the shapes of the original tensors, and we can conclude that the resulting tensor will have shape three by three. The original tensors of shape one by three and three by one will now be expanded to shape three by three also in order to do the element wise operation. Broadcasting can be thought of as copying the existing values within the original tensor and expanding that tensor with these copies until it reaches the required shape. The values in our one by three tensor will now be broadcast to this three by three tensor. And the values in our three by one tensor will now be broadcast to this three by three tensor. We can now easily take the element wise sum of these two to get this resulting three by three tensor. Let's do another example. What if we wanted to multiply this rank two tensor of shape one by three with this rank zero tensor, better known as a scalar. We can do this since there's nothing in the broadcasting rules preventing us from operating on two tensors of different ranks. Let's see. We first compare the last dimensions of the two shapes. When we're in a situation where the ranks of the two tensors aren't the same, like what we have here, then we simply substitute a one in for the missing dimensions of the lower ranked tensor. In our example, we substitute a one here. Then we ask, are these two dimensions compatible? And the answer will always be a yes in this type of situation, since one of them will always be a one. All right, all the dimensions are compatible. So what will the resulting tensor look like from multiplying these two together? Again, go ahead and pause here and try yourself before getting the answer. Well, the max of three and one is three, and the max of one and one is one. So our resulting tensor will be of shape one by three. Our first tensor is already this shape, so it gets left alone. Our second tensor is now expanded to this shape by broadcasting its value like this. Now we can do our element-wise multiplication to get this resulting one by three tensor. Let's do one more example. What if we wanted to sum this rank three tensor of shape one by two by three and this rank two tensor of shape three by three? Before covering any of the incremental steps, go ahead and give it a shot yourself and see what you find out. All right, assuming you've now paused and resumed the video, the deal with these two tensors is that we can't operate on them. Why? Well, comparing the second to last dimensions of the shapes, they're not equal to each other and neither one of them is one. So we stop there. All right, and now we should have a good grip on broadcasting. Let's go see how we're able to make use of it in our VGG16 preprocessing code. First, we can see we're changing our mean image net RGB object into a rank one tensor, which makes sense, right? Because we're going to be making use of broadcasting, which is going to require us to work with tensors, not arbitrary JavaScript objects. All right, now get a load of this remaining code. All of this code was written to handle the centering of the RGB values. This has now all been replaced with this single line, which is simply the result of subtracting the mean image net RGB tensor from the original tensor. Okay, so why does this work and where is the broadcasting? Let's see. Our original tensor is a rank three tensor of shape 224 by 224 by three. Our mean image net RGB tensor is a rank one tensor of shape three. Our objective is to subtract each mean RGB value from each RGB value along the second axis of the original tensor. From what we've learned about broadcasting, we can do this really easily. We compare the dimensions of the shapes from each tensor and confirm they're compatible. The last dimensions are compatible because they're equal to each other. The next two dimensions are compatible because we substitute a one in for the missing dimensions in our rank one tensor. Taking the max across each dimension, our resulting tensor will be of shape 224 by 224 by three. Our original tensor already has that shape, so we leave it alone. Our rank one tensor will be expanded to this shape of 224 by 224 by three by copying its three values along the second axis. So now we can easily do the element wise subtraction between these two tensors. Exiting out of this diff and looking at the modified predict.js file alone, we have this. So the reversing and the expanding of the dims at the end is still occurring in the same way after the centering. Now, actually, if we wanted to make this code even more concise, rather than creating two tensor objects, our original one and our preprocessed one, 
We can chain all these calls together to condense these two separate tensors into one. We would first need to bring our mean ImageNet RGB definition above our tensor definition. Then we need to move our sub, reverse, and expand dim calls up and chain them to the original tensor. Lastly, we replace this reference to process tensor with just tensor, and that's it. So if you took the time to truly understand the tensor operations we went through step by step in the last couple videos, then you should now be pretty blown away by how much easier broadcasting can make our lives and our code. Given this, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Did you follow? Do you see the value in broadcasting? Oh, also remember all those times I asked you to pause the video and record your answers to the examples we were going through? Let me know what you got. And don't be embarrassed if you were wrong. I was wrong when I tried to figure out examples like these when I first started learning broadcasting, so no shame. Let me know and I'll see you in the next video.